On today's episode, I'll show you how I made a 3D printed logo on a shirt for Detroit Maker Faire. I'll show you how I did it on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters, and they get special access to ChepClub.com. So join us. The first time I ever saw this technique of 3D printing on cloth was by my buddy Preston of Press Reset. And he did it a long time ago. I don't even know if he still got the video up. I can't find it. But many have copied it, but he was the first one I ever saw do it. I already have my Chep logo in Tinkercad, so I went in and modified it. The top red portion is 0.4 millimeters tall, and then the white portion that's underneath is only 0.2 millimeters tall. So it's very, very thin. Now I'm going to export it as one STL file, but then I bring it into Simplify 3D. And the first thing I do is offset it one millimeters for the thickness of the cloth. I'll explain more about that in a minute. So the whole print is offset. And then I did two processes. The first process is basically for the white. I did 100% fill at a 0.1 layer height. Temperature, I turned the bed down to 10, so basically off. Speed, I slowed it down to 40 millimeters per second, but then advanced is where the big key is. I stopped printing at 1.2 millimeters, so that means the white will be 0.2 plus the 1 millimeter offset. Then I did a second process with all the same settings, but I told it to start at 1.2 millimeters and then just go to the top. So there's two processes here. I'm going to change color midstream, and here's process two, which is just the lettering. So the white and then the red. That one millimeter wasn't a guess. I used a shop rag and tested with the auto level and I found one millimeter was perfect. I got it to work on the rag. So then I moved to the shirt. So the shirt I had to kind of position as best I could to get that chep in the proper position. One was off a little bit. I did two of these shirts. And then I just taped it down and tried to stretch the material so it was nice and smooth and held firm. That was actually tougher than I thought it would be, especially with a collar there that kept wanting to pop up. But I got it all taped down and then I let it do its auto level. And if you look closely, it's hard to see, but the nozzle actually pushes into the cloth. So that's where the one millimeter offset came from. I had to allow for that crunch. So then I loaded up some white filament and I let the Artemis load it, which is really cool. It just quickly winds it into the nozzle. And then I started printing and it was flowing beautifully. It was printing better on this smooth fabric than it was on that rough shop rag. So it ended up two layers because I printed at a 0.1 layer height and it's 0.2 thickness. So two layers of white. Then I needed to change the plastic. So I unloaded the white, which again is fun to just watch this thing undo. And then I brought in red filament, Friday filament, and loaded that up. Now I needed to clear this out. So I ran a little bit more extrusion and made sure the red was coming out, not white. And then I let it print and it started drawing the letters, doing the outline. This was actually looking fantastic. It finished the final layer of red and then it lifted up and I had a 3D printed logo on my shirt. It seems to be holding to the shirt really well. The corners are even tight. Now this may not hold up in the wash. I'll save that for a future test. So I've wanted to try this for a while. I finally did it and I think it came out great. And I'll be wearing it at the Detroit Maker Fair. So if you come, stop by my booth. I'll be inside the museum. Stop by and say hi. That's it for this one. If you like what wait, I'm doing wait, here, maybe wait, wait. One more thing. Remember last week when I had those swirling lines on my big 3D print and I thought it was either the machine or the slicing? Well, it was the slicing and it was me. I screwed up. I didn't do a big enough outer layer. And this is the result of that. When the infill hits the wall, which is angled, it hits at different points. And so you end up with this curve where the two intersect and because my wall thickness wasn't big enough, it was popping through. And I had several people comment that my wall thickness wasn't big enough. I just went with the default settings that were in the profile. And I had never seen that before because I don't print big that much. This pattern was matched perfectly to a CAD analysis that a uh, Twitter follower, Primo Seppin, I think is his name. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Sorry, Primos, if I said that wrong. but. He did a full analysis and showed these exact curves, which is the intersection of the interior with the exterior. So that's all it was. I increased it to a bigger uh, outer layer. I basically just added one layer and I reprinted it. Now it's a little bit smaller, but still all those lines are gone and it looks great. So that's it. We can go back to the show now. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of these videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon. 
get you access to Chep Club, and if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.